You may already have watched my video on how to make a column interaction diagram, where we defined all equations in terms of c, which is the distance to the neutral axis. In using MathCAD, we were able to solve all the load-to-moment combinations at varying values of c. Also, we were able to plot the interaction diagram. We know that a column with eccentric loading has lots of load-to-moment combinations. That's why it is best to define the capacity of a column using an interaction diagram. And by visual inspection of the diagram, we can tell that a column is structurally safe as long as the applied load-to-moment combinations are within the usable area of the diagram. In this video, however, I understand that some may not have the MathCAD software to plot all the P2M combinations. So I'm going to show how to do a column capacity check just for a specific loading. I'm going to show three examples on how to check the capacity of a column manually. Let's say, for example, we need to find out the actual compressive strength of a column the bending moment, and its corresponding eccentricity at balanced failure. Balanced failure is when the concrete and steel fail at the same time. For this example, we have a 400 by 500 mm column, which is reinforced with eight numbers of 25 mm diameter bar with 27 MPa concrete strength and 415 MPa steel strength. Since concrete cover is not given, we will assume 40 mm cover, this is the minimum cover requirement for columns as per ACI code. For the lateral ties, we will assume 10 mm diameter tie. ACI code specifies a minimum 10 mm diameter tie for columns with main reinforcement not greater than 32 mm diameter. Then we can calculate for the effective depth and the depth of the outermost bar. So just to do a check, based on the cross-section of the column and the given reinforcement, the steel ratio is about 2%, which is good because ACI code specifies 1% to maximum 6% for columns subjected to both axial load and bending moment. We calculate the steel areas at extreme tension site and at extreme compression site. Next step is to calculate the strain values and the tensile stresses. The strain in steel at yield point is calculated as Fy over Es, which gives a value of 0 0.0021. The strain in steel at tension site can be taken by ratio and proportion. Since we are after the balanced failure, then we shall use strain in steel equal to yield strain. This will give us a value of C, 259 mm. Using the C value, the distance to the neutral axis, let's check the strain in steel at compression side, which is given by this formula. So 0 0.0023 is greater than the yield strain 0 0.0021. This means the steel at compression side also yields. So we will use Fy for the tensile stresses at tension and at compression sides. Since we know the value of C, we can calculate the value of A, which is the compressive stress block depth. We can also calculate the value of the strength reduction factor given the strain values. The next step is to calculate the forces and the axial load capacity, bending moment, and the eccentricity at balanced failure. The forces at compression side are given by these formulas. Note that the steel force at compression side, we use Fy minus 0.85 F'C to account for the concrete displaced by steel at compression side. We are using Fy since we are calculating based on the condition that steel yields same time with concrete. So the nominal axial strength at balanced failure is equal to the sum of all forces, which gives the value of 1984 kN. We can also calculate the ultimate axial strength using the strength reduction factor calculated earlier. This gives us a value of 1290 kN. To calculate the eccentricity, we take the summation of moments about T. 
Pn times the moment arm, which is equal to S centricity plus H over 2 minus D prime minus the compression force by concrete times the moment arm D minus A over 2 minus the compression force by steel times the moment arm D minus D prime. Using this equation, we can get the value of eccentricity, which is equal to 255 mm. Finally, to calculate the nominal bending moment, we just need to multiply the actual strength, Pn, times the eccentricity. We also can get the ultimate bending moment by multiplying with the strength reduction factor. Let's look at another example. This time the eccentricity is given and we need to find the actual load capacity and the bending moment. We first assume that Fs and Fs prime are equal to F1. Then we calculate for the forces by steel at compression side and at tension side. The compression force by concrete we need to solve for the value of A. We use the equilibrium equations to solve for A. We use the equation summation of forces which is Pn equals to Cc plus Cs minus T. We also use the summation of moments about T, which is given by this formula. By substituting the PN equation to the moment equation, we derive a quadratic equation where A is the unknown. Simplifying the quadratic equation, we get the formula equation for A. And then solve for A and the value of C. Which gives us a value of 223 mm. Since it still yields, so our original assumption that Fs and Fs prime is equal to Fy is correct. For the steel forces, I indicated minimum of Fy and Fs or Fs prime. This means that if the tensile stresses Fs and Fs prime are greater than Fy, the formula will use Fy. Else, if the tensile stresses are less than Fy, then the formula will use the tensile stress values. So the ultimate axial load capacity at given eccentricity 210 mm is equal to 1173 kN. And the ultimate bending moment at the given ACC is equal to 246 kN. Let's look at another example. This time we need to check if the column is safe to carry a factored load and a factored bending moment. We need to check if the column is safe to carry a factored load of 700 kN and a bending moment of 140 kN. The eccentricity can be calculated as the factored moment divided by the factored load, which gives an eccentricity value of 200 m. Similar to what we did earlier, we will assume Fs and Fs prime to be equal to Fy. Should the value of C gives the strain and tensile stress values less than Fy, meaning Fs is less than Fy or Fs prime is less than Fy, contrary to our first assumption, then we need to recalculate the value of A and C again, based on the lesser value or based on the Fs and Fs prime values. We need to do step 2 and step 3 again.
So the ultimate actual load capacity is 1202 kilonewtons, which is greater than the 700 kilonewton applied load. The ultimate bending moment is 240 kilonewton meter, which is greater than 140 kilonewton meter applied moment. So the column is saved to carry the applied load and the applied moment.